Hello and welcome back to some top level chess finally featuring the world champion Magnus Carlsen. So Carlsen is playing in the speed chess tournament of chess.com and I'm going to show one game of his uh, first round matchup and then uh, I will comment on the very very strange thing that uh, that happened and that Carlsen did in the very last uh, last game of the match. So uh, yeah so this, there is this uh, speed chess tournament that's uh, at an online tournament, so uh, after Norway Chess, which happened a month ago, we, uh, while the over the world tournaments once again got uh, postponed and cancelled, so uh, we are migrating back to online, and um, well, this is the first top top online tournament, is this speed chess tournament of, of chess.com, and it is actually organized in a match format, and in a knockout system, so Karzen is playing uh, playing against uh, Parham Max Zudlu, a super strong Iranian grandmaster, the, the number one of Iran, who is also actually very young, only 20 years old. His rating is uh, like 26, 70 or so, so he's really strong. Uh, but of course he's facing uh, the world champion Magnus Carlsen, so uh, yeah, um, not much chance uh, for Parham. So uh, we are going to join for game number five, and at this point Carlsen is leading by one point. In the first round, actually, Karzan uh, made a mouse slip in the very beginning. And then even with the white pieces, he had to fight for the draw. And then uh, <clears throat> I think they played three, three more draws. And then in the fourth game, finally, Karzan was able to well, draw first blood and they took the lead. And now it is uh, game five. So let's get started with the game. d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3. So we are going to see bishop b4. We are going to see the Nimzo. e3, castles. Bishop d3, d5, and well, it wasn't the, the exact same position, but in a, a sort of similar position, uh, cards and mouse lived in the first round and played the move a4 instead of a3. a4 is obviously a super bad move, so after a4 you have this uh, bishop uh, on b4, which is a super good piece, you have no no pawns to, to kick it out, and the b4 score is going to be super weak for the for the rest of the game, so this mouse slip was very unfortunate for Karzen, but he managed to save the game. Uh, but here, no more mouse slips, it comes a3, the main theory, takes, takes, takes on c4, bishop c4, c5, knight e2, knight c6, very standard developing moves, castles b6, bishop b2, bishop b7, now the bishop goes back to g3, and uh, f e5. I think there are multiple ways, ways to continue, one would be to just take on c5, b takes back and play the move c4, to open up all these diagonals against the black king. Um, that's an interesting diagonal, but I went the, the long diagonal. Um, so, well, this is one way to continue. But Carson decided to play the move uh, knight g3, which is also quite normal. Here, black played c takes d4, e takes d4, and now black took on d4 once again. So here it's important to stop for a second. So what's happening is that uh, White obviously has these two super strong bishops, and what you want is obviously to open up these diagonals. Again, I made it wrong, so the long diagonal. And also this uh, b1h7 diagonal. So you have absolutely no intention to take back on d4, uh, because black is not going to blunder his king, is not going to play knight d4, after which you can take, take, and uh, take the queen. But uh, black is going to play the move knight d5, very important and strong move. And the point is that you uh, completely blockade this d4 pawn, and this is not going to move for, uh, forward. And as long as it doesn't move, the b2 bishop is completely stuck. So for that reason, uh, Karzen obviously doesn't take back on d4, and he also doesn't play the best move. So the best move here would be to play knight f5. And this is uh, actually not only hinting towards taking on d4, but also the knight on, on, on d4 is a super strong piece. So uh, if actually black is careless and plays the move d takes e3, then the point is that white can take back with the pawn, also opening up this this uh, um, this f file. F6 uh, knight is under crucial pressure, and actually the computer just uh, um, just recommends black to simply resign here. There's literally nothing you can do. Knight takes g7 is going to come, and then black white is just going to cruise through with these two bishops. They're going to just checkmate the 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 black king. So um, after knight f5 we cannot take on e3, so the best move here is just passing something like rook e8, but then white can take on d4, and we reach the position where white has the two beautiful bishops along these diagonals, 
And while it, this position looks very bad for black, uh, and if you are playing against uh, Kazan, you all you can do is just pray to survive because he's going to checkmate you anyway. Um, but this is not what happened in the game. Uh, Kazan played move rook c1, which is not, not direct enough. Because now black can just play rook e8, and the same, uh, same idea still prevails. You cannot take on d4 because the knight jumps into d5. So uh, here Kazan played the move e4. So basically uh, sacrificing the pawn, never going to take back on d4. Um, but trying to create some counterplay, probably with f4 and e5. So here comes knight d7, bishop b5, that's uh, activating the bishop along this diagonal, but the knight can just dump to c5, and after f3, black is doing completely fine. Um, Parham played the move uh, a6, bishop takes, bishop takes, and uh, well, we got opposite colored bishops, it is quite clear that, well, this pawn is going to sooner or later um, be taken, you cannot really push it forward because then you open up the diagonal against your king. So, well, the position is more or less equal, but here Karzan blunders, plays the move bishop takes d4. And here I invite, I invite you to stop the video actually and try to figure out why this move was a blunder. So this bishop is supported by this queen, but we can very easily just uh, kick out this queen with bishop a4. The problem is that this queen has to protect this d4 for bishop, but there is no no uh, place it can actually go. Uh, if you take the queen d3, then obviously this is hanging, it's covered by the, the knight, so only other move would be queen d2, but then cups knight b3, hitting this one, this one, and also this one, and the game is immediately over again. So the only way to continue was to sacrifice your queen, which Carlson did with bishop takes c5, and after bishop d1, rook a d1, now for the time being black has two, two minor pieces uh, for the queen, but uh, again, Parham did a very good uh, decision here. Well, I forgot to mention this game is actually played at uh, 5 minutes uh, plus 1 second uh, to increment each move, so that was a time control. So Parham here made the, the simplest choice to win the game, so simply took on d1, uh, takes back and b takes c5. And black is not only up in exchange, but the problem is that this c pawn is a passed pawn, and that's going to be promoted very quickly. The game ended actually quite, quite quickly without any more twist. So black was just able to push this pawn, so the point is to push this one down the board. And it doesn't matter that you manage to blockade for the time being, the black rook is going to arrive on d4, the king is going to go all the way to b5, kick out this knight, and then this uh, pawn is going to be queening. Also the, the white king is completely cut on the d-file, so there's nothing uh, Karzen can do here. And really just uh, goes through. You don't have to carry about, uh, or care about what's happening in the king's side, the spawns are too far away. So Parham went all the way, and then the uh, pawn is just uh, queening, there is nothing here left to, to do for Karzen. And this is a nice final blow, even though your rook was hanging, you play the move rook b1 attacking this rook, and uh, obviously you want to make a queen, but knight c3 comes, that looks like forking your pieces, but you can just uh, sack this rook and the game ended. So this was the way that... Uh, um, Parham uh, managed to, to equalize against, uh, against Magnus, against Karzen, but uh, unfortunately the rest of the match was not interesting at all. Here came, uh, I think, an 11 game winning streak of Karzen. So basically, um, yeah, in, in online chess terms, there is this, this term of, uh, of adoption, so if you beat somebody 10 times in a row, that uh, means adopting. So while uh, Karzen did this against a very strong player, um, and the uh, well, the match result was something like 24 and 5 before we reached the last game. And this is the, the game I... I'm not going to show the game, I'm going to show the, 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 um, the opening. So Karzen is with the white pieces, and he opens with 1c3. And probably Parham um, already see that uh, something is going to... already saw that something is going to happen here, and did not play uh, like e5 or d5, but he played the move 1c6. And here Karzen played one, uh, 2f3, which is already a horrible move, and now you can see that something is going to happen. And uh, black replied with one f6, uh, 2f6, and now comes king f2, king f7, king e3. King e6, and now Karzen even went back with... Uh, so the plan is obviously, this is this known uh, sort of some variation of bond cloud, you wanna play king d3, king c2, put the queen on, e, queen on even and then go back with your king and then you just switch around the, the queen and king position. 
Um, but here actually Kaizen still played the move king f2 and after king d6 he started this, this uh, run again. And this is um, like queen e8 or something like this and like queen e1, I don't know, e6, king d1, this is how the, the game started. Um, yeah, so this was a one minute game, I'm not going to show you any more of, of this game. Um, while well, this was bullet, the uh, game obviously had uh, many mistakes from both sides and then uh, as most of the most of the match, um, Baran was the one who London more, and Karzan won this one as well. Um, but yeah, so this is a this is a strange way to start a game, obviously, and and so to be frank, once you are actually up by like twenty points and you completely annihilated your opponent, playing this, which very much looks like just uh, going for the humiliation of uh, of your uh, of your opponent. Um, yeah, so I I don't think this was a this was a good way to do this. Yeah, of course, I mean, you can do something like this if it, it was a super, super tense game and then you are leading by two points in the before the last round and then whatever happens, you win and you're happy and you just make some fun, whatever. But once you are just completely beating the, the hell out of your opponent and then you even do this in the last round, um, yeah, I don't think this is a this was a good choice by Carson. And actually some credit goes to the opponent that... Um, um, I sort of didn't uh, pick up and didn't start to play chess, but also went for the funny way to make uh, to make this idea a lot, looking a lot less foolish than it was. Um, yeah, so this is actually my opinion. Let me know what you what you think about this this choice of Carson going for this this bonk load by just uh, moving around your your king for for the first ten moves. Um, yeah, actually, I'm curious what other people think about this. And um, yeah, in the in the next videos, I'm going to continue the the coverage of this uh, speeches tournament. You have one more comment that uh, the next opponent of Carson is going to be either uh, Anish Giri, the the best friend, um, or or um, Artemyov. And uh, well, after after the after the match and interview, Carson said that uh, simply Artemyov is just an uh, overwhelming favorite against Anish, which some people also kind of thought it was a bit of trolling or so, but actually Karzan is more or less right on this, so Artemyev has a, has a record of that's just much better than, than Anish is, and she's not known to be a good blitz player, so uh, while well, it's just more or less not trolling, just an honest opinion. But if you go to Anish's uh, Twitter account, you will find a different opinion on this. Um, otherwise, yeah, see you in the next video.